Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hardware News Recap for the past week. Let's get started with the biggest item here, and that's that there's a rumored integration of AMD Zen architecture in the PS5, or whatever the next PlayStation may be. That's not immediately all that alarming or different, because they're using AMD now, they probably will continue to do so, but this is the first real concrete potential evidence that we have pointing towards Zen inclusion in the next PlayStation. That would be the first time that Zen architecture specifically has been used in a console. So we'll be talking about that. Also new Spectre attack vectors that look like they could exploit firmware access, which is alarming for a number of reasons. And some news on an embarrassing mining ad that we'll go through momentarily. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzlies High-End Thermal Paste and Liquid Metal. Thermal Grizzlies Cryonaut is an affordable, high-quality thermal compound that doesn't face some of the aging limitations of other pastes on the market. Cryonaut has a thermal conductivity of 12.5 watts per meter kelvin, focuses on endurance, is easy to spread, and isn't electrically conductive, making it safe to use on GPU dyes. Thermal Grizzly also makes Conductonaut Liquid Metal, which we've used to drop 20 degrees off some temperatures in our delitted tests. Buy a tube at the link in the description below. First up, leading Linux publication Pharonix. They are in the technical coverage space like we are, except they cover basically Linux exclusively and to great depth. They published a story that noted a Sony programmer submitting code updates for something called ZNVER1, which includes low-level virtual machine updates, or LLVM. LLVM is used in software compiling and a Sony engineer's work on updating LLVM with Zen updates specifically would align with PlayStation's utilization of virtualization uh, to compile software. Pharonix notes the following, quote, On Friday, Simon Pilgrim submitted a cleanup for Zenver 1 code. Last week, there were more changes across multiple commits, and these upstream LLVM improvements by the Sony programmer have been going back at least two weeks with this just not being some one-off cleanup attempt. And then they go on to thank a reader. Phronix also indicated that the LLVM updates are specifically for Zen architecture. And if you are one for connecting dots and forming conspiracy theories based in reality, this one would seem to soundly suggest Zen architecture inclusion in the next PlayStation. Logically, the PS5, though the way Microsoft's done their naming, we'll see about that. So it'll be interesting to see if AMD's products get used in uh, in PlayStation 5, but more importantly, or more interestingly, we're curious to see if any Raven Ridge or APU products specifically are leveraged there and how the semi-custom side of AMD's business will go about customizing those for the PlayStation 5 because Raven Ridge is a pretty good fit for a console. So uh, with some upfitting and changes for consoles specifically, it could be a logical inclusion and we'll see what they do with that. Next one, Spectre attacks that can access firmware. So first off, the interesting thing here is that anything that can write to firmware is a really scary type of malware, and it's not because it can break the motherboard. So we saw a lot of comments on stories about this specific news item where people were most concerned that their motherboards would be bricked intentionally and you'd be left without one. Actually, what's most concerning is anything that can write to firmware can survive a format, can survive reinstalling Windows, which is the most common go-to fix for any kind of malware on a computer. Whether it's you doing it for your own cleanup sake or anyone really bringing it to something like Geek Squad or some other computer shop, that's the go-to fix if you can't figure out how to get rid of it otherwise. So the security firm Eclipsium has published a new application of Spectre Variant 1, which allows access to system management mode, SMM, an element of the BIOS. Eclipsium is headed by Yuri Bulligan, Bull I'm sorry, former chief threat researcher and senior director of advanced threat research at Intel. And according to Eclipsium, this, quote, runtime part of firmware, often referred to as SMI handler, has long been of interest to security researchers and a target for advanced attackers, since this code has high privileges and operates outside the view of other software, including the OS and any security applications. The exploit could be used to reveal secrets in memory, as well as expose the confidential workings of SMM and further vulnerabilities. Eclipsium has been working with Intel since March on this, and both Intel and Eclipsium agree that Intel Spectre mitigations should apply to this vulnerability. 
However, Eclipsium raises the point that fixing the problem will require customers to manually update firmware, which not everyone will do, either because of laziness or because you just don't know that you should. And a lot of customers probably don't even know what BIOS is, to be completely fair. And Intel serves a lot of people outside the enthusiast space. So that's one to keep an eye on. Next one is just kind of uh, amusing. Amusing, a little sad. Bitcoin specifically is using 0.5% by end of year. We'll be using 0.5% of the world's electricity as an estimate. So this is not blockchain as a whole. This is not Bitcoin and all the altcoins. It's not Bitcoin. It's just straight Bitcoin. And the report is on livemint.com, which suggests from a, an economist research paper that Bitcoin specifically and alone will be consuming 0.5% of the world's electricity by end of year, which is about as much as the country of Ireland. Estimates are that Bitcoin processing consumes 2.55 gigawatts. That's not, not exactly what he said in the movie, but and that a single transaction can use as much power as the average household in the Netherlands in a month. This is the part that I am unclear on, and we did do some digging to try and figure out what they meant by this in the article. But what we don't know is when this uh, Live Mint website says it can use as much power, one transaction uses that much power. We don't know if they mean one transaction as in I send Bitcoin to you or if they mean like something to do with mining on a greater scale, uh, i.e., I don't know, discovering a new block or however it works. So I'm not clear on exactly what they meant by that. But the bigger thing to this, the bigger aspect that I did want to point out is that just like making an electric vehicle or something like it or a hybrid vehicle, there's an ecological cost outside of just the straight usage of power. Uh, there's consideration of where is the power source, what's your closest source of power that's providing electricity to the mining devices, which would be ASICs at this point. And then also, speaking of ASICs, what is the impact of creating all of them? So there's, there's a bit more than just straight power draw, but uh, we're not going to get into any further details than that because uh, I'm not a blockchain expert. So that's the news item anyway. Next one, AMD unifies its discrete GPU and APU drivers. This is something we've been waiting for for a while now. So their unified driver packages may be, probably if they work properly, uh, Anatech points out that the release notes for the Radeon Software Adrenaline Edition second quarter 2018 Wickle is uh, listing support for the 2400G, the 2200G, and that AMD has called it a unified driver and users have installed it successfully with a range of APUs and GPUs installed simultaneously. It's also the first official driver release for the Ryzen APUs since the launch in February. So it uh, looks like now you can actually have an APU with an AMD GPU and have both of them accessible via drivers. So that's good news for anyone in that situation. Next one, Intel has put forth a plan to invest $5 billion in Fab28, one of their factories in Israel. The plan is set to be approved by the Israeli government in the coming weeks. As part of the deal, Intel will receive a 5% tax rebate until 2027 if approved and a $195 million government grant and a further $195 million if they make, quote, further strategic investment to significantly upgrade its plant technologically. Intel made a $6 billion investment in Fab28 back in 2014, probably with the intention of gearing up for 10 nanometer, which has since been delayed into eternity. And then this one was our favorite news item for the week. It's an embarrassing mining ad. Biostar would like you to know that you too can be part of the exciting world of cryptocurrency mining, just like these smiling models of stock photos that have been photoshopped together with the new iMiner device from Biostar. They released three models of pre-built iMiner systems filled with either 560s or 570s, the RX series that is, and ready to mine. The marketing seems eager to prove that crypto isn't just for sweaty nerds who play games in their basements, but is also for fashionable stock photo models. And anyone can do it. It's fashionable, it's easy, and uh, there's also no price listed yet. But Anatech spec table does note that fiat only, sorry, specs for each model can be found on Biostar's website. So um, yeah, uh, it's. I think they said it's ultra easy money, easy to set up, easy to make money, and it sounds like the kind of cringeworthy advertising phrasing you'd see in, I don't know, an infomercial. So uh, maybe, maybe work on that one a bit, Biostar, if you're trying to win anyone over. Although they are certainly doing themselves 
no favors by doing the whole uh, look at look look at us millennials to use the word of Anantech. We're selling a product that will just print you money, and making it sound like it's a whole lot of it at that. Leon Lee has new Bora light fans. We had a one of our Patreon backers. I'm talking to you, asking about this a while ago, and I sent Leon Lee an email, and this was their answer basically. So uh, they've announced their new Bora light 120 fans that have a range of 900 to 1500 RPM and a max CFM of 48.3. Features include 12 RGB LEDs for, <coughs> quote, majestic illumination in the central hub and an outer frame of CNC milled aluminum. So visually, they're very similar to the aluminum framed Boras that Leon Lee sent us for our 011 dynamic review. I'm sure we have some footage of that. But the frame on the new model is more circular and overhangs the edge of the blade slightly. So you can't actually see the gap between the blade and the fan frame, which is just a visual thing, really. Most importantly, they have normal PWM and RGB headers rather than those six pin connectors that only fit Leon Lee controllers and have been causing us all kinds of problems with their existing fan lineup because you can't use them with anything else except for the Leon Lee controller. So they fixed that. And the fans are available in packs of three with a six-way fan splitter with PWM cable, three-way RGB splitter, and anti-vibration pads. The whole thing's 40 bucks for all of that. So we may cover that in our fan roundup, but that's TBD. And then final news item here, GPX ice blocks coming out for AMD and NVIDIA cards from AlphaCool. AlphaCool has announced the GPX ice block full coverage GPU cooler for AMD and NVIDIA cards. The block includes a back plate completely enclosing the PCB, there are two variants. The 150 euro GPX Plexi is the fancier one with a large window and RGB lighting, while the 120 euro Acetal one is exactly the same, but with a metal cover and no lighting. The RGB lighting is compatible with Asus, Biostar Gigabyte, and MSI. AlphaCool claims performance of the two versions as identical, and the Pascal or Titan version of the card and Vega versions are also available now. This is something we saw briefly at PAX but they're now finally coming out. So you can check the product listings for compatibility with specific cards if you're interested in that. And then finally, for hardware sales for the week, we've continued to notice that prices are returning toward MSRP. So we'll link one of the cards that we found in the description below. They change every day. So we're just gonna link one of the 10 series cards that's been on sale lately. And by, by on sale, sadly, I mean uh, at MSRP-ish. So... Don't really want to call it a sale when you're talking about coming down from, I don't know, $300 over MSRP to merely $50 over MSRP, but it seems like they're coming back down. So we'll link one below if you want to pick up a video card at a reasonable-ish price, then we'll have that link for you. Otherwise, we also noticed an Acer 1440p 144Hz monitor for a little bit cheaper than normally and an Intel 8600K marked down by about 20 bucks. So not a huge sale there, but something worth pointing out. AMD's Ryzen CPUs and Threadripper seem to have more or less normalized at these new lower prices with the 1000 series, now that the 2000 series has shipped. And honestly, this is something that we've wanted from Intel for a long time, because if you've not noticed, whenever Intel ships a new generation of processors, it seems like the new gen and the old gen, basically the same price if you look from K SKU to K SKU. And AMD has actually dropped the prices on the 1000 series CPUs with the launch of the 2000 series. And that's what you would expect, but that's not what we've seen for the last five years from Intel. So uh, at least those have continued to fall or have at least stabilized at this point for AMD Ryzen. Anyway, that's it for this week. As always, subscribe to get more coverage throughout the week. We have a lot of really cool stuff coming up this week. And go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our mod mats or one of our glass crystals, the GN Teardown logo, laser etched in 3D. We now have an autographed one up there as well. Uh, also, one quick thing, Computex will be happening soon. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you are, because that's where all the new PC hardware news will be coming out for the next year or so. And that's in about a week from now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.